What's up guys? This is the Brofman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of My Empire Total War. Let's play as Great Britain. And this will be in our special. So picking up where we left off, we are withstanding a Polish sally from the city of Vilnius. So without further ado, let's crack on. So I've not really got a significant amount of uh, troops in reserve. <laughs> I don't know, have my normal overwhelming superiority. But we're likely to be in pretty good shape because we've got we've got square formation, we've got cast shot, we've got socket bayonets. So on the battlefield, we will likely be superior to the Polish troops. So let's take our guns. Let's set up a unit of position that's hmm, maybe more like two in the middle, stretched out wide because they don't have fire by rank. Maybe just a shade forward of that tree might be a better idea. Oh, I've not deployed my troops well anyway. Guns, guns, guns. There you go. Okay, let's pick up three units to stretch out and cover the flanks. Then let's take these two units, they can cover the left flank. Clansmen on either flank with some cavalry to help out. My general will probably need to get involved as well. And let's see what happens. Okay, they've got mortars, which aren't going to be too much of a problem at this early stage, but I am, I'm happy to let my... Damn! First volley, two mortars destroyed. That's not something that usually happens. It looks like they're abandoning the left flank. Or their left, my right. I do see they've got cavalry pushing up, so... Let's just push my flank up. Pivot these chaps. Probably actually get my regiment of horse over on the left because it looks like that's where they're massing Brunswicker Dragoons hit the second lancers. May even want to do something more akin to this. Keep my Highlander foot back as a reserve. Oh yeah, I haven't had a look actually. These are my Brunswickers. The colouring does match the unit. Uh, the unit emblem. Okay, we've charged into the Lancers who are stuck in a formation. Too bad we're getting some weird sound bugs. Let's run my men into squares. So they've charged some of my infantry that are running free. You guys switch to cast a shot. My clansmen will counter attack. These men can prob could leave square, but I think they'll likely run into some trouble. This foot line from tune it's likely not to cause too much trouble. my cavalry around on the around on the flank because I want to try and get around the back of this combat. Let's get rid of the horse pushing in as well. Just make sure the square formation remains solid. I want to try and take out some of these cavalry to go relieve the square over here. Looks like they're the overall infantry formations are breaking and running. My regiment of horse is better than their provincial cavalry. My Highlander warband are going to support, keep these guys deploying into square. Lots of their infantry are routing. 
My Brunswickers are stuck fighting the Ulands. My general is going to sit here, keeping everyone happy. My regiment of horse. See, I'm so used to clicking and attacking Britain in these videos. Okay, let's run my clansmen to go hit the 11th. So these men can then push like so. Cavalry battle over here is being won. The Brunswickers are still fighting against the Lancers. So my Highlander warband with their hatchets or axes they're going to smash into this line infantry unit which does not have bayonets and will likely tear them apart. Okay, good. Let's get our infantry out of square. Let's get them to form line near the gunners. Charge my cavalry on. The Brunswickers are now losing against the Lancers somehow. We may lose the Brunswickers, so let's get, maybe not my general, let's get my regiment of horse over there to support. These guys have got a lot of firepower to put out in order to win. Let's pick this artillery unit here, keep lobbing artillery shots at the armed citizenry. Yeah, we are winning here, we are picking off their infantry. Regiment of horse go charge the lancers. back. There we go, we've broken this unit at the rear. Let's try and charge them on into the 14th. We want to try and maximise our formation's firepower together. There's a lot of mercenaries and cavalry back there. The Lancers have been murdered though, so let's charge my cavalry on to go hit this pocket of artillery to the rear. The Klansmen may not survive this charge on the 14th. Keep the canister shot going. So that's the, the first regiment of foot going down. You see how much easily we would have, how much easy, more easier we would have wrecked this battle if we had fire by rank. But when they rout, I want to switch to round shot so I can start lobbing shots over my line as I decide to push. Good, the Polish here also shattered. Come in around the rear and hit the hit the artillery. So my guys were being shot at by the mercenaries, but they've made it into the combat, so that's likely their artillery destroyed. I might actually get my field artillery to focus on the lancers. these guys to pivot around and shoot them in the flank. Same with those guys. And these men can port, form up, create a new line. You guys got onto round shot, start to hit the lancers. Cavalry engage the regiment of foot back here that's shooting at my men. Yeah, my clansmen, what these clansmen are doing a great job clearing out their men. The cavalry have broken, so it's just these native Eastern European mercenaries left who are getting engulfed by our cavalry. There we go. These men will likely not stay in the battle for very long. But we know what happens if you leave 
these units long enough that they will start to reform. So just keep pushing up our line until these guys break. And they're fighting bravely, but not enough. We're not going to chase them down because I'm not interested in destroying them. I'm inclined, I'm more, I'm inclined to uh, leave them be. As I think, well, it may make more sense to chase them down because they're the garrison. Oh, I suppose it does. So continue, but abandon this unit and instead drive on to some of the garrison troops. Let's turn off the artillery. Try to get my general. <coughs> Sorry about that. Try to get my general involved. Uh... So these guys just keep keep on charging. Keep on charging, targeting garrison units. Chances are more of these units are garrison, uh, are garrison troops, but it's easier to focus on the ones that specifically say garrison, just to make sure I know I'm attacking the right units. So let's see how many of the 12th we can kill as our cavalry sweeps around the map. It looks like they're all going to die. There they go. Awesome. we lost 700 men they lost ne nearly 1900 as they fall back they will likely bring out more men we will need to replenish what we've got ah an ottoman end turn let's see how much of a pain this will be but the main thing to bear in mind with vilnius is ooh, i do not want an alliance no 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 i do not want to be involved in more european wars than I absolutely need to. So the main thing to remember about Vilnius is right now it is a unwalled town. So in order to hold it, I have to have a uh, quite a serious force in there and fight pitched battles that in the future may become very one-sided. I may find myself um, surrounded and fighting enemies on multiple flanks. So that makes Vilnius a bit of a liability, especially as it's protruding out to the the middle of uh, well, it's more landlocked. Königsberg, I can resupport, I can support and resupply through transiting my ships through the Baltic, but I can't do the same for Vilnius, which means at some point down the line I need to pretty much the first turn I get access to building, I get access to earning twelve thousand a turn. I need to spend a good chunk of that. I need, pretty much need to spend that entire turn's income on building walls around Vilnius because it is significantly um, easier in the long run to defend in a fort. And personally, particular, particularly tier 1 forts. Tier 2 forts tend to have a lot more bugs, but at the same time, they do allow for more enemy troops to enter the killing fields within the walls and make them easy to destroy, which we've seen in the in the battles in India. And I suppose this can be part of the problem about not having visibility on what's going on in the Ottoman end turn. And we're back. So I had to chop the Ottoman Ottoman end turn phase because it started dragging on for far too long. It dragged on for so long I ended up playing, playing on my phone. That's how long it started to drag on. Um, but... British Empire, however, will never look at its phone. It will continue to expand and grow its borders. But yeah, it definitely means I'm going to start chopping out end turn phases. Cannot rely on the... Uh, cannot rely on the Ottomans being realistic. And helping me out. Uh, yes, take the flute. We rule the way. So let's get these ships into Grand Bahama. Go into Grand Bahamas. They can repair. 
Construction. New farms. Good. Firstly, I want to spend some money replenishing these men. Got some militia recruited here. Got some extra troops which, which, which we could send eastward, which we likely will. Let's build one more fifth rate to keep our naval production going. Can you guys leave here on territory yet? Uh, sans militia. Waiting for orders. Minus four. Not far off. Uh, we do have yes, visibility on Montreal, but we're not interested. I want to march up towards Quebec. If I hit the city... Yeah, the city's got a lot of militia, regular troops. I think it's, it's probably worth attacking it now, because we know there are troops stationed here. So it's easier to take them out while we can. We do have a unit of militia coming in on our flank, but we must capture the city and boot out the French from North uh, North America. I think in one turn we'll have captured Quebec. We've also got troops landing near Fort Nashwak, I think, the most northeasterly mainland territory. Okay. So my Hessians, you can storm around the flat ground on the right flank. My redcoats, supported by pikes, my redcoats can push the left. Pikes can push through the town. Cavalry are going to support them on both flanks. Set my guns up here. The general going to follow the Hessians. This cavalry might spin around and go hit the hit the uh, militia that are coming around the around the rear. New men going to run up. We do also have these rangers. Right at the edge of the map here. Storm our pikes. Actually, no, they're pretty useless up here. Come over here. Cavalry. Charge the militia. These pikes can also come down here. Hopefully we can annihilate these militia in... Short order. Push up Mont General. At least we are going to start folding up this flank as well. Pretty folding up the left flank, pretty easy. The right flank, they're going to have to do a bit of a bit more fighting than they would have liked. There you go. That's the militia dealt with. So now drive my cavalry up the right flank, push my pikes here to try and start to charge into some of the enemy coming in to reinforce. Some of the militia are having to realign themselves. Howitzers are going after my... Howitzers are going after my... Um, pikemen, as expected, it is their kind of history. Let's have a look at the Hessian line. Obviously, they look very different to their unit cards with red facings. Instead, in reality, they have yellow. But they're doing a good, doing good work. Push my cavalry through. Charge my cavalry on. To be honest, bring up the bayonet charge on this flank as well. Pikes can go after the Ottoman scouts and go straight for the guns. As my cavalry swings in on the right flank to hit the militia. 
Okay, this melee charge on there should not go their way. You men counter charge the militia. Okay, you men charge on. Keep the momentum going. Those men charge the colonial militia. Halt my artillery. It doesn't seem to be doing any good. Yeah, those guys routed, I think, partially due to A, mortifier, and B, my uh, my own artillery fire. So this melee attack is broken up very easily. Shattered, broken, broken, shattered, broken. Some of my pikemen are still content to continue pushing. This cavalry can keep going. Drive on. There we go, pivot. My infantry round. Get this cavalry to start chasing down some of the guys that are routing. Keep my infantry running around, apart from this big block here. But general, you can start to attack. No, actually, don't attack anyone. You're all right. Charge my pikes on into the mortars. Everyone else looks like they are. They are incredibly upset. Charge the yeomanry on. The regiment of horse can also charge on. I mean, it's very much overkill to charge my line infantry into... Hello, Ottawa scouts. Got a volley into the Ottawa scouts. Let's get my cavalry here to charge into them. go the mortars let's pick up these line infantry units and they can join the main battle as can these guys there we go cavalry charge is inevitable let's redirect my artillery to engage oh never mind there we go quebec is ours and that is a suitably valuable region to take. We lost f nearly 600 men in doing so. But there we are. There is more men. So these men need to replenish as much as you can. It's not as much as we'd like. So that's probably why we need to start sending some relief columns up to help them out while at the same time this force needs to make quick progress elsewhere on the continent so we have no there's no garrison here well there's no deployed troops it's just garrison troops so if we demand the surrender we'll likely gain it can these men okay you you guys can you guys leave the capital well not the capital per se but you men can do this so if we make this this area tax free, uh, they are down to minus one, which means they will not rebel. Which means that these ships can book it to somewhere safe, which is probably going to be Newfoundland. Got some fifth rates here, but we have no safe harbour. So the bulk of my ships can't do anything more than except gather in Newfoundland. Nation destroyed Italian states. How have the Italian states been destroyed? God damn. That's my empire just tearing through. They'll likely come back though. Okay, fleet arrives. That's those fifth rates you've already dealt with. Okay, let's take a brig away. Deploy these Hessian lines here it's probably the 
deploy them on the mainland, ready to try and sprint west. Oh, your grenade might get pinched by the French fleet, but that's okay. To be honest, could you men... You probably could, actually. Go put Montreal under siege. In fact, let's take... more of my men. Let's take as many men as we need to not make them rebel. Okay. I'm going to leave the guns behind. I need to leave one more unit behind. Let's leave... We've already got two pikes. Let's leave the unit of pikes behind. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of good from a morale perspective. So if these men can blitz and hit Montreal, we might be able to make a peace with France quick early on. Which I won't mind, because we'll have taken all of their territories we want up here anyway. Cool. So how are we doing from a trade perspective? We can, oh, I could probably trade with Austria. Yes. Let's try and see who else we could trade with. Crimea? Nope. Venice? No. Nope. Denmark won't. Yeah, we're not without an island swap, which ain't happening. So in terms of tech, two turns to fly by rank, one turns tills animal husbandry, improved animal husbandry, good stuff. Let's hit end turn. Okay, the French have they've not directly challenged our garrison or our occupation of Quebec. So potentially our forces mar marching to go take Montreal. If they could take Montreal, it would be interesting to see if we can negotiate a peace, a temporary peace, uh, with the French Empire. No, because you're enemies of lots of people on the continent. I don't mind holding your eastern flank, of sorts, with Königsberg. Aha! It's got, it got him an end turn phase, so I'll see you in a second everyone, just because this takes forever. Hmm, that one was sufficiently quick. Maybe I won't do it next time. I didn't even look at my phone, didn't even have a chance to think about playing with it. They're the 13 colonies. Okay, but the interesting thing is, let's see if we can get to... get to Montreal and knock out the city quickly. The Mughal Empire is not sufficiently holding on to the uh, Maratha Confederacy there. But we can't afford to... <laughs> have too many wars. We need, to take, we need to take control of the north, then also take control of the south, and get the 13 colonies on our side. Okay, improve animal husbandry. The, the Dutch, the beautiful Dutch, freed up our port. I mean, they did in England, not in, not in the Americas, the lazy swines. Workers on strike in the Huron Territory, that's okay. You guys can't get there in two in one turn. Merge. Merge and get them to hightail it there. These guys are the same. They cannot get there in, in time. You men can continue to replenish and probably rebuild the buildings that I have not yet fixed. Same here with Fort Nashwack. Okay, let's maybe not tax them yet until we've fixed it. Let's get some basic upgrades going. Let's not upgrade the roads here because that will allow the, uh, the French to be more mobile. Governor's Chambers? No, probably upgrade 
this port, most likely. Then over here in the east. Still replenishing. I'm content to wait and hold them out. One more turn till we get fire by rank. Then this we want to select crop, crop rotation, but instead I probably want to get on to hmm. maybe spinning Jenny because it's so quick. Workers on strike in Acadia, not anymore. Let's hit end turn. Ooh, they're not going to make it to Montreal. I've got an army in place that can hit the city and take it. Which would be perfect. Because then we can take the city, negotiate a peace, and then send one of my forces south to start to invade the Cherokee lands and uh, make the conduct the sort of offensive operations I need in order to get the 13 colonies on my side. Because I believe I have most of the... I've got the northern ones, the northernmost ones I need. I'll, to be honest, it'll probably end up being a two-pronged war against the natives, but we're going to fight another uh, defence outside the gates of Vilnius before we take the city into our ownership. I mean, they've still got one more turn after this, withstanding the siege, unless their forces are completely destroyed today, which I don't think they will be. But still, I will happily engage them. Especially as we are now behind trenches. To give us that defensive advantage. Come on. Deploy. There we go. Two infantry on the left. Cavalry's pretty knackered. The Scots are okay. I could probably deploy deploy them to get some cavalry defences somewhere, maybe, but I'm not entirely bothered. Their forces are rather... Well, they are significantly weaker than they were. Bouncing shot killed the many militia. Regiment of horse, they got some line infantry, including the first. Still no bayonets, I notice. These men can't do much more than charge into my lines and be repelled. The regiment of horse has opened up and has, it's got within range and it's taken the first volleys. Against the British regulars, these men have no chance. I'm looking at these guys specifically because I know... There they go. Beautiful. Apart from the guys jumping up and down. The militia are broken. Focus on more in the centre. These two units will destroy that militia unit. Run my Scots around the flank. Oh, but yeah, this was a fairly natural conclusion of events. They're desperately attempting to hold on to their city, which they love dearly, but it is not enough. We will capture the city, we will make it Protestant. And it will be a bastion of the British Empire and a wedge ready to drive into the heart of the Soviet Union. Just a shot off. Lots of dead men. And the third in the third regiment of militia. There they go, they've had enough. Deploy my puny cavalry divisions to chase them down to keep them to keep their morale broken. Get my 
Scots to charge this tiny unit of militia. Ah, see, the enemy has reformed. So my weak unit can chase down... To be honest, they can both chase down the militia. Red and blue uniforms together. Beautiful. The Scots have killed them on the flank. If these men pivot like so, and I charge my Scots into the first regiment. So imagine that, you're there. Oh no, they've broken. I was gonna say you look you turn over and see this coming at you. There's a large orange hedge moving towards us. Well that's not a hedge. That's the Scots. Ah, <laughs> oh, Okay, push my men up. Oh no. Oh. They're all broken. Good. Good. It will not be long before the city is in our hands. We only lost 83 men during that action. It will become a, it will become a, uh, a useful territory to own. Like I said, it might become a bit of a uh, liability, but that's kind of why we have to end up sending more troops that way. And I know exactly what's going to happen, because I said the Ottoman intern last time was okay, and now I'm not going to chop it out. At least not immediately. It's going to take ages. So, let's not do that, and I'm going to chop it. So, see you in a second, everyone. Ooh, actually, it's... Chugging along. Ah, see? Nearly. I nearly did it. The problem with chopping the recording so many times is I end up not being able to use my um, recording timer. I have to use the actual clock and guess how much downtime I've had. Like in New Spain, are keeping our ports free and clear, although not for too long. It's of the, of the utmost importance to get the 13 colonies into the fold because that's a lot of territories that are actually pretty wealthy and they produce a lot of goods. There's a lot of exportable resources in those territories. The Barbary States continues to run around and be oh, get destroyed, seemingly. This is it. They're only producing very low quality navies so they can't the moment they sail near anyone who has intent to actually respond all their ships just melt your orders, your okay so henry dayton his force can march on and hit montreal and we have fire by rank which is delicious uh do we go straight on socket bayonet probably not go on to naval shore facilities we make some naval improvements. Bristol's upgraded their port, which is good. Let's pick up two fourth rates. Let's take these fifths. Sell them over to the Americas. Kingston was blockaded only temporarily. And I can take these fifths to go... Yeah. Let's take these fifths to go clear it out. Let's start to contribute to uh, to uh, to our colonial allies. Let's take their ship into our service. Get back to Grand Bahama. So our Caribbean squadron is growing. Because we are going to be able to push into their territory sufficiently quickly, this guy is going to sit here. Then Henry Dayton, you're going to push and hit Montreal. And let's see if we can, through a decisive victory here, if we can uh, force the French government into a peace. Because that means that their infantry there teleport to probably the Windward Islands or the Leeward Islands, depending on which one it is, I always forget. 
no clever strategy here. We have fire by rank. Drop my pikes and stuff behind the lines, my general behind the line. Yeah, when I say no clever strategy, we have fire by rank. Even though we are equivalent broadly on numbers, we put out significantly more firepower. And there's nothing they can do about it. Nothing. Apart from seemingly push up into our faces. Let's run our pikes along the left, although it's one thing I'm curious to see is where are my Irish volunteers? The right on the flank. Okay, so look, they're sat there firing firing normally. Whereas ah oh, the sound stopped. What a there we go. <laughs> That's my grand line stands ready. Not that you can see a lot of it. But yeah, there's not a lot they can do there. Okay, let's not pivot them because they're still firing. I want to see if my Irish volunteers are capable of using fire by rank. Because they're standing in like a militia, militia-esque order. But sometimes the Ottoman troops we've seen and they can do it. They kind of create their own weird little fire by rank system. Yeah, they do. Awesome. Even though it doesn't look as pretty. Hey, look, there's enemy cavalry. It might cause problems for my Pokemon. We know they aren't. We, they, they, we know they aren't uh, invulnerable. Although, maybe the troops they're fighting are so sufficiently not good, it looks like they are just going to turn around and just fight in every direction. Brave stand of the pipes. Because everyone's losing, the cavalry's losing. Well, they're, sat, they're saying the cavalry are doing pretty good. And go, nah, they're not. Our pikemen are supposedly losing. But not for not for long in the grand scheme. Oh no, you guys are running in the way of my troops. Push up my men. Pikes, pikes, pikes. Charge this general in. Then let's get him out. There we go, the pikemen are back to winning. Let's push up these dudes. Twentieth Regiment of Militia is They're still standing. Although to be honest, you probably want to do something more like this. There we go. Get our other pikemen involved. That'll clear the way. Especially from those pesky cavalry. My light cavalry ought to be going down. Let's get my general out of there. He's no longer necessary to fight that battle. Push these men up. Let's go hit the militia. You guys turn around and get onto the flank of the, that militia unit. See, it says the cavalry's winning, but I don't think they can sustain that, especially these men carrying the horses. Okay, let's pivot you guys. 
like so, get you men to line up like that, in case the pot and militiamen come back. You men may have the high ground, but we have pointy sticks. Pointy sticks don't care about the high ground. Charging into my pikemen, I can't believe them. Says they're winning decisively. I am sceptical of that decision. There you go. So some of my infantry are going to get shot on the flank by... They're going to get shot on the flank by these men, and they're not going to be as effective to respond. But there we go. They've abandoned their position on the wall. If I get that unit to focus specifically on... Attacking the cavalry, then hopefully they'll break, and then everyone else will break much easier. Give me a bit of an execution of the first regiment of militia. Yeah, they're upset. All of their men have died. All of their their army has died. They fired their volley, then they're going to rout with honor, as the men over here have broken. Good. Let's hit end battle there. That's a good victory for us. <laughs> and the garrison was destroyed to the man. To a man. Hercule Abney. Destroyed. France. France, France, France. Peace. <laughs> Understandable. Probably push my men onto the bridge, hey, I suppose. If I exempt you from tax, kind of helps. But now it does mean we're going to have raiders. But you all can't leave, can you? No. Let's build the government building just to cheer you guys up. Let's get ready to respond. Because need to destroy this army. We need to destroy these guys. Uh, push. Actually, if I push these men out of the port now, they might just go. Out you go. Okay, one more turn to spinning Jenny. Three turns till we get the new ports. Yeah, so if you push them out, they immediately start, mo start moving. They're probably going to go and set my little ship. Yeah, there they go. Let's see how many my brig can take out. The fleet <laughs> it took lost. out two of them. But they captured our brig. Oh. They can just run past my dudes. So we do have our other army's reinforcements. That was kind of lame. Boo on them, sir. Boo on them. But uh, yeah, the army that just took the city is available for reinforcements. Let's deploy our guys as far... Well, just on this hill, I suppose. And then... Here come the reinforcements! So my field... My, uh, yeah, there we go. They've just started to realise that... Hang on a minute. That looks like a lot of men. And they're not deploying towards us, towards us with as much speed as they should have. So why how it's just focus on this militia because they're all clamped together. Everyone else is going to get a lovely demonstration of British musketry. Not, they're not in position to put as much uh, decisive firepower against us as they as they need to do. Come on, the twenty seventh. Yeah, they are putting shots in near us.
pikes can run out onto the flanks. Fire! I'm not even bothering with my with my original uh, with the the actual garrison here. Good, just means we can get more of them. We can get more of them through artillery fire than we otherwise would get. More troops. Troops for the troops guard. So glorious, and I do love it. Early game when you get this technology, and no one else has access to it. Accidentally, we did cap a few of our own chaps. They've got their own Hessian line, bright red coats, as they actually attempt to push towards us. Who is this? This is the 6th. And British infantry, British line infantry, is very good. I think they say it's second only maybe to Prussian infantry. Like stock, our guys are much more accurate. And they might reload quicker. Native musket and auxiliary. You men fire it well off. In la with la well, due to my lack of cavalry, it's my pikemen that are going to be the skirmishers. Okay, now you guys can fire it well again. Generals getting involved. They know they can't stand. They can't uh, stay on the flank like they would. They can't stay to the rear because when my pikemen are coming in. Come on, the sixth. Hey, native bowmen, general. That sounds like a call for you. Demi cannons are re relocating. Oh, the light, which is going to tear the militia a new one. My bowmen may end up dying. Yeah, because they're going to get shot to bits by these bowmen before they can get into combat. Well, looks like they've not retreated quickly enough. absolutely melting in the face of my the face of my pikes and my pikes are engaging their general which should be falling very swiftly where is their general there he is <laughs> look at them all go on have him good Bodyguards fallen. Charge the field artillery. Charge these men forward. Where's my general? How's he doing against the bowmen? There they go. So there's only the 23rd left. And can my pikemen kill all the gun crews? Yes, they can. Good stuff. So let's get my pikes to go chase down the militia. Let's get my general to start to chase down some of these men. Uh, let's continue. You guys all charge the colonial line. 
Just charge. No strategy needed. I just want to use my general to hack down some of their, or as many of their infantry as they let me get my hands on. Not that I have very much cavalry to take advantage of, but there we are. Take advantage of what I've got, I shall. Because this army is going to be routing towards Fort Sultz and Marie. And where's the other guys? They're all the way over there. That's native bows, and there they go. But it feels like, yes, my original garrison is safe. The French troops have been routed. And my strategy to start to march men south seems like it could work. It's likely I might end up literally just marching them through um, my territory. Well, my allies' territory or my protectorate's territory rather than sending them by sea. Because I may lose them and I'm definitely going to... What? If I auto-resolve it, will I die? We Good. And I fought that battle twice. The third battle can fall without a shot being fired, I think. And obviously they're going to raid. Understandable. It is their former territory. Uh, but I will attempt to try and make peace with them. Likely unsuccessfully, because right now they've not got... They can't spend their time making peace with all the people they're at war with, otherwise they'll never get their territory back. But yeah, I think the, the action is to chase down with one of my armies, the Frenchmen in Canada, send one of them south to start to uh, get into position to attack the Cherokee. Some are probably going to attack the north. <gasps> Russia's declared on me. Dare I call in my allies? The United Provinces has, has abandoned faith. Well... Looks like I might be sailing an army up to St. Petersburg. This is a very unorthodox route to take this campaign. <laughs> but take it I shall. The Mughal Empire, yeah, they're, they're definitely done. They've just lost another territory. Well, they've, they've taken... So the, the Mughals have taken something back, but also they've also taken Hindustan back, actually. It's kind of back and forth. Hmm. As a nuclear strategy, I'd give them fire by rank. Then they could really push back against the Marathas. Okay, so diplomacy. Actually, if I click diplomacy, Poland, peace. Yeah, understandable. They're not very happy about it. Okay, it will likely mean that these troops I've got back here, you men, will deploy into. Uh, this area, because we've then got to we to secure Vilnius, potentially push on towards Minsk, and then open up a a new front. You can't get back to London in time. But probably going to be okay. Let's make sure the port is occupied so we don't lose any to any raids. Let's upgrade one of our docks. Spend a good chunk of money on repairing the buildings we've got and replenishing the troops we have. Don't expect to get a lot of income from this region. St. Petersburg would be a lovely target. It would also break the back of the, the Russian effort against Sweden as well. 
Ooh, British Fusiliers. Could shoot in reload experience, but they aren't good melee fighters and can't hold the, they can't hold the line, stand against normal line infantry. Hmm. Okay, maybe it might be better for normal line to fight the Russians because they tend to swarm. So my individual ship got destroyed. Two new fifth rates have arrived. So much so. Let's take all these guys. I'm going to water resolve this heading off because I, oh, I just head up to here with naval battles in this game. Take them out. Is that a fifth rate? It is a fifth rate. How many have they got left? Two. One. Routing completely the way I don't want them to go. God damn it, Edward Russell. You had one job. Uh, this force. Okay, you guys are probably going to get the job of marching south towards Georgia. These guys. Oh, they are replenished. Let's pick up the government council. And you guys can pick up some. No, carry on replenishing. Uh, you men can't leave yet. How may I yeah, that's going to be a frustrating little pocket of men to kill. It's an enemy agent over there, good. Alliance broken with the United Provinces. Hessen has arisen. Hessen. Oh. They have no access to the seas, so they cannot trade. The United Provinces, however, the scurvy dogs have betrayed us. And not kept faith. Let's send our rake up to St. Petersburg to keep an eye on what's going on. KDA, you built roads. Can you now be taxed? We will be able to. Okay, let's hit end turn. <laughs> so they're going to book it. But I'm definitely going to chase them down with my ruined fleet. Can't have them sailing around to the north and start to attack Rupert's land. The Austrians are more than happy to go and raid uh, Ottoman ports. That's no of no matter to me, of no consequence. And they're gathering their forces, but they're not going to push. It would be opportune, I think, if Russia attacked Riga and then attacked Courland, because then I would take it off of them. It looks like they are going to take Riga. So I may end up landing a prospective future army there and push to St. Petersburg by land in order to maintain or to help support Konigsberg a bit more. Here comes a Louisiana agent. There's going to be a bit of a battle between Catholicism and Protestantism here in the Americas. Mughal Empire responding. They've taken back another territory from the Marathas, which is good. Like you can see it from down here, like the map colours. Like territories keep popping back and forth between orange and green. They've got the good old Barbary states and the good old Piratas. Okay, we're on 10 grand turn. That's pretty good. Let's get our some of our plantations upgraded. Let's take the Montreal garrison and just go and auto this army down here. Because they're almost depleted anyway. Yeah. Ugh. We men replenish. Chase them down. We can repair our fur trapper post. Repair this fur trapper post. We can build a mine here. 
upgrade the farm. Uh, these ships go hit Basil Montesquieu. There we go. Sail them into Plaisance. You can spend a thousand on repairs, but I won't get them all. You continue your drive down towards the Cherokee. Cherokee are allied to the Marath the um, Iroquois, so we're not going to get a free lunch down there. They're allied with the Dutch as well, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting proposals. Okay, let's get let's get these troops also embarked and deployed over towards Russia. There we go. You can no, you can't make it back. Okay, these four go hit these Guardianas, or act Guardianas, knock out those remaining troops. Get a bit of replenishment done, you can't do everything you need. These troops can also move up, you guys can continue to replenish. We likely will attack Minsk, but we also need to keep in mind Koningsberg does need to be protected and held. These are quite some, some elite troops, they've done a lot of scrapping down here. Who's Austria actually at war with? The Ottomans in Prussia and Poland. Okay, so we're the only friendly flank. They're at war with everyone else. And I'll take that. If it means I can take Minsk and open up potentially the route to Kiev. But St. Petersburg is calling me. Got our upgrades. We're going to be 10,000 a turn. 10,000 gold next turn, which is pretty handy. And then turn. Oh, the Dutch are at war with the Spanish. Interesting. Interesting. Berlin's doing a lot of upgrading. Poland is strengthening their hand. As is Russia, sending more men down towards Riga. Sweden are continuing to raid. It looks like the French have given up, attempting to move that small army around, which is great news for us. That could be the frustrating thing about watching the Barbary States and the pirates. It's because they don't... They're just annoying. They don't do anything. <laughs> They've got naval shore facilities, which gives us access to the next naval building. Let's get it back on the socket bayonet. Oxford, let's get you on to... Measuring tools. To get that 8% bonus to... to 8% bonus to town wealth from all buildings and plus 10% wealth generated from industrial buildings. That's pretty darn good. Got a new agent. John Lethbridge. Let's get you to Cambridge. That's a, he's a brand new agent. Isaac Newton, dusty librarian. Let's repair my troops. It's yes. tempting to actually dump you guys into Koningsberg just to act as a bit of a buff to the garrison. Probably get a drill school on the continent as well. Let's upgrade this farm. Let's knock down this theatre. I'll make them a bit unhappy, but I want to start to drop some church schools. Let's push you up towards Vilnius. Let's get a drill school in Vilnius as well. Get Swiss guards and grenadiers. That's pretty cool. Uh, not yet, apparently. Um, okay. Pick 
can put a port upgrade because they're quite good in the long run. You guys continue to go and kill Amadeo Village de Joyeuse. Got some good upgrades for that. Got some good uh, traits, I mean. Okay, so can we take these guys out of Huron Territory? We can. Can I take another unit? I can. Can I take a third unit? Or can I take the last unit? And the answer is yes. So you can join up with Henry Dayton. The Canada garrison can actually move, I think. Yes, you can. You can move to Montreal and be ready for the inevitable attack on to the Iroquois. You guys keep pushing south. Yeah, Henry Dayton got a lot of traits for that. Okay, I think that's all of stuff we can do this turn. Let's hit end turn. Yep, Austria sending their troops south. The United Provinces, ooh, they're demanding. They want an alliance again, but they're going to give me technology and money. And in which case, yes. It it likely means they would probably like our help against the war against Spain. But to that, they can go swivel. Uh, because right now I have no interest in fighting Spain. I've got my hands full with Poland and Russia and soon the Native American factions. Good God, the Russians are coming. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Sweden is sailing an army up into the Russian rear. That's pretty good. This turn I may have enough money to get the construction of walls at Vilnius. Or at least to kick them off. I'm just sure. If my previous income is correct. <laughs> Let's see how the money turns out. Because the yeah, the Russians are on their way. <laughs> That much is certain. Ah, oh, we're short. So there is... These are decent troops as well. Okay, you guys get in the city. Let's pick up two more units of infantry. Let's be, be careful to specifically leave enough for more... For more, uh, for, for, to build walls next turn. Trade route raided, yeah, we know. Nation destroyed Morocco, Spain took them out. Huron are unhappy, so let's tax them, or turn off the taxes for them. Got government buildings up in the north that we could upgrade, but I don't want to. Abundant yield fur market is good, but are we already bottlenecked on trade? No, we are not. You guys march up. God, build some roads. <laughs> 13 colonies. Jesus. And there's Rogers Rangers. Hmm. Build a set of guns. No, 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 don't build a set of guns. I've done it again. Cancel recruitment. Yeah, I get 8,000. Which means we need four thousand. I need to steal one of these port upgrades. OK, 
Okay, let's hit end turn. Russia can't get to us immediately. They can't get to us next turn. We can start the ball rolling. The Spanish are sending a fleet to invade somebody. Prussia wants a military alliance. Nope. Although they're doing pretty good. Okay, maybe I should have said yes. Come and help me against Russia. <laughs> uh, no, if I'm definitely... If I'm, no. No, 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 no. I like the fact you don't like Russia. Yes, see, they're having to d stop and worry about the Swedish that are behind the lines. It looks like the Swedish were able to churn out a significant quantity of troops. But let's get walls built in Vilnius, and I think that I'll, I'll probably call that an episode. Like I said, I have to guess at roughly how long I've been recording, because I've chopped the episodes around so many times. Hey, looks like Portugal might have come back. Hurrah! Hey, we're allied. Wait, hold on. Yeah, new nation. Nation destroyed. Oh, god damn. Austria was doing so well. Right, okay. Um, Portugal. Trade. Why do you not want to trade with me? Okay, pressure. Um... Let's ally. <laughs> let's 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 be cool. Uh, France, let's try and peace out, peace and trade. That'd be good. Good. Uh, Thirteen thousand, which is enough to build walls in Vilnius. Some scallywags behind the lines. Actually, Poland. Peace out. It would be nice if they would peace out. I might even try... Peace out and I'll threaten you. If I could have made peace with them, that could have been quite handy because then I could have marched east or northeast and hit St. Petersburg and Riga. But as it is, I cannot... So it looks like I'm probably going to end up expanding my foothold in Europe. And it looks like are the Ottomans and the Prussians at war. No, Russia and Poland they're at war with. No wonder we all align so, so well together. Maybe I should ally with the Ottomans, why not? Not build an opera house. Again, just keep I'm keeping all my economy focuses in the Americas because that's where we can make a lot of money. We men continue to march. We'll march around the guy then. So the, who who's better to declare on? You're quite allied with, allied with Genoa, Cherokee, and the United Provinces. Cherokee are just allied with the United Provinces and the Iroquois. So the Cherokee are the easier one to declare on because it causes less problems. We don't, we're not risking war with Genoa. Let's deploy our fourth rates over to our home fleet. And I think I'm probably going the episode there, and it's, it's getting quite interesting, really. We're actually, there's a grand... <laughs> the Ottomans, the Prussians, and the British pushing east into uh, Russian territory. It's pretty neat. But, looking at the timer, I guess that's probably the end of the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.